I'm going to talk about leaky cables done right in 2024 uh, for Wi-Fi. This is a journey I started with my co-presenter, Miki Ferrari, who sits here in the audience. And we are going to talk about analyzing uh, leaky cable Wi-Fi networks in order to uh, assess the performance uh, issues, problems, and also asking ourselves, how can we design for leaky cable networks using existing commercial tools. We will focus on um, industrial logistics use cases where the distance between the antennas and the uh, end clients is quite uh, big, so 12 meters and more, and uh, requirements are usually um, large area coverage, low client density, and low application requirements. Uh, cost is a major constraint in these kind of choices, and let's see how it turns out. Uh, leaky cables are a strange animal, actually, it's, uh, it, they have a, a cylindrical radiation pattern, and uh, they have um, quite uh, semi-directional properties in front of the slot side, uh, side of the cable. So the beam width is quite wide, it's uh, 160 degrees, meaning the signal travels in front of the slot side of the cable down to the ground, but also there is a significant lateral propagation. Uh, in front of the cable, that's not the right way to put it, because a generic uh, leaky cable has a very strong electrical tilt, meaning that uh, the signal does not travel in the direction we want, but uh, in a, unintended along the, the cable with a 10 degree more or less uh, tilt, which means we will have coverage holes uh, if the cable is not optimized. We can control this behavior and reaching a wider angle up to 65 degrees or 80 degrees depending on the frequencies. And that means that we can get the signal where we need it based on our designs. So uh, the cost associated with controlling the tilt is that we will have a higher longitudinal loss up to 0.3 dB per meter. And speaking of loss, we also have coupling loss. So a very, very popular solution with leaky cables is using an amplifier to control that and make up for the losses. So the typical configuration would look like a generic third-party access point, an amplifier device, uh, and for example, two antenna runs for two frequency bands. So uh, that's an opportunity because we want our amplifier to be PoE managed, uh, PoE powered, fully managed. We want monitoring based on that. And things get very interesting here because uh, we can do funny things like uh, instead of running two antenna cables, for example, when we want to Wi-Fi frequency band service, we can use an integrated passive device to do frequency multiplexing and having two Wi-Fi bands in the same antenna run, which means a much more simple design. We can also multiplex non-Wi-Fi like private 5G or LoRaWAN or whatever. The different cables have different frequency responses to that. That's a design issue that has to be tackled. Another interesting thing is, uh, compared to a traditional MIMO 2x2 deployment, we can use a technology called Smart MIMO, which uh, uses uh, phase shifting and the natural slot diversity of the cable interface in order to obtain uh, MIMO. And this has an up to an 80% efficiency compared to a traditional MIMO uh, deployment with two cables, once again, uh, simpler design, simpler installation, and a lower cost. So the general setup would be like this, a third-party transmitting device, an access point, whatever vendor, the active uh, uh, amplifier plus uh, smart MIMO plus uh, integrated passive design uh, device, and the antenna run, which is a, a part of a fully integrated and uh, designed together solution from, in this case, from Kimata Systems. Uh, we wanted to validate that in uh, warehouse uh, deployment. We went to a newly, newly finished warehouse that was uh, in not fully operational. They started to populate the racks with pallets and uh, product. We uh, wanted to assess the performance on the network and look for issues, most obvious ones. Um, 
considering that it's a 2.4 giga network and very simple requirements and basic connectivity for barcode scanners and the like. Uh, this is a layout of the floor plan. The yellow squares are the positions of the access points. In green, you can see the antenna runs, and you will see that they run across the shelves, across the racks. So this is a very popular um, design solution, which minimizes cable runs and minimizes uh, the number of the access points compared to uh, other designs. But one most obvious issue that comes here, that's uh, um, a manual ca ca per perfect example of uh, a hidden node problem. So if we look at the position A and B in our floor plan, these two devices cannot hear each other because they have uh, six or seven shelves across them, so they won't be able to transmit uh, with, uh, without uh, causing retransmissions. We wanted to test that, and yes, after uh, a bit of trying, we managed to reproduce that and getting more than 20% retries. This network, uh, this network in particular was protected with RTS and CTS, and, but uh, still, this is the result uh, that we got, and keep that in mind. Uh, analyzing that with uh, survey software from Ekahau resulted in the access point position being mapped surprisingly accurately. Uh, this is uh, an installment, um, an installation with uh, the access point in, in the center of the antenna of the cable run. So actually, Ekahau does a good job of uh, positioning the access point in the right place. The signal strength was um, consistently very, very good. SNR as well. We use a Sidekick 2 to measure that. So we got data rates of about 103.2 megabit per second, which was far more exceeding the requirements of the customer. And another issue that was not so satisfactory was co-channel interference. So in every place of the floor plan, it, we were able to hear every other access point on the, in the plant. And this is due to the partial occupation of the shelves. So the higher tiers of the racks were not populated with uh, pallets and products. So automation was low. We got a lot of reflection. But uh, um, we expect that to, 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 to be solved uh, when uh, the operation is, is, fully, is in, in, full, in full steam. Um, how to tackle uh, retransmissions and uh, protection issues, uh, RTS and CTS, configuration best practices, um, the usual SSID reduction, more spectrum efficiency, more efficiency in the, in the wireless LAN. There are vendor-specific configuration guide for um, optimization with uh, leaky cables installation. So the point is, okay, we can uh, install it, validate, measure, we, can, we know what the issues are. How can we design for leaky cables using existing commercial tools? So unsurprising, it turns out we cannot. So Mickey resorted to design and code his own uh, uh, simulation tool for a leaky cable installation. We show you a screenshot of that. That's a sample warehouse design with antennas installed and um, attenuation objects, uh, warehouse racks, uh, and uh, uh, frequencies and heights configured. So this software does uh, what you expect, attenuation, mapping the heat maps on the floor, measuring that on different heights, taking into consideration the specific antenna designs and the attenuation values of the object. It does um, attenuation, uh, reflection, and diffraction of the, of the signal, and it's a fully working software that you can check out later if you're interested, if you want to see it live uh, with me and, me and uh, Miki here in the conference. So, Really, thank you very much for your attention and see you.